I still have, I, I do hold resentment towards the situation, but my adopted mother passed now, so I can't really, you know, I'm older now, so I, I get a lot of things and, you know, I understand a little bit, you know, but it's, it was still wrong, you know what I'm saying? I still never got an apology for the situation. Um, at 16 years old, I ended up... If he were to happen to come across this video on YouTube, um, first of all, what do you think his thoughts and his reactions would be? probably upset that I exposed him but I don't care because like some like like I said I told mom if you do come across I told our mom the situation I did tell her whether you know that or not she didn't believe me because you would literally come downstairs pretend to wash your clothes and do weird stuff and I got the worst of it because I ended up having to <sighs> yeah that's I don't no, know go ahead and tell allow it. Allow that, but no, tell <laughs> it, tell it. You end up having to what? I end up having to, you know. What's up, YouTube? I have the best trainer in Atlanta and possibly the world. Hit him up on Instagram at Katie with the Muscle. Now back to the content. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. So we got a young lady with us today. How you doing today, miss? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Thank you for of asking. Course, um, so are you homeless? I am. Okay. Right. Um, how old are you? I'm 29. 29? Yeah. And so how long have you been homeless? Uh, for at least two or three months. But from the beginning, I've been homeless literally all my life. But I was able to, you know, couch hop. I had friends where I could stay at the house and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, but for the last two, three months, it's been kind of outside type deal. Yeah, I live in a tent currently, um, actually around the corner. Okay, um, I get it. The Mechanicsville area. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so what was it that happened two, three months ago that caused you to have to be outside, outside? Um, I was in a, a partnership with a friend, and um, I was actually the one trying to help her out because she ended up homeless herself and she had like three kids at the time and um i was trying to help her out and things of that nature but the situation ended up being flipped and it didn't work out it was my fault um I what happened accountability for that uh we ended up getting an airbnb um a pastor and his wife ended up paying for it and um the airbnb was listed under somebody else's name um and she wasn't allowed to lease her apartment as an Airbnb. Um, so we ended up making a deal with the lady and we told her we'll pay her whatever we need to pay her to you know, keep the place until we could find our own. And I ended up sabotaging it because one of the, um, the managers that work in the front office came to the door and was asking for the lady that actually owns the, the apartment. Mm -hmm. And um, he was asking, was this an Airbnb? And, I told him, yeah, and we ended up. Why? I sabotaged it. Why I did you tell him? Yeah. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't Why did you tell him you were just a guest of? I wasn't thinking. I was. Uh, it's it's an embarrassing story. What apartment was this? It was um. Briar Briar Briarcliff or Briar Hill something. So it was like over that. there by over there by Briarcliff basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Oh I ended man. Up sabotaging it. And <laughs> Yeah. So wow. She, so she wasn't she wasn't with that. So um, I had to end up leaving, and I, I don't know where she is right now. But meaning your so not, your partner, your girlfriend, yeah. basically, right? But she, we wasn't. Yeah. We I wasn't get like, it. Y'all didn't make the affair, <laughs> but y'all was romantically involved, right? We wasn't. No. We was just in partnership. I was trying to help her in, in the beginning. The point of me being a partnership with her was to help her and her kids. But then the situation flipped, where now I'm. I'm so are you like into women or into men? I'm into well, women. Women. Okay, that's why I was just trying to figure yeah, out. But like we wasn't together. Okay, okay, because that if you made it sound like that at first, that's okay. I yeah, get, it, I get. It. No, 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 no. I, I may have assumed. My bad. Yeah. No. All right. Good. Cool beans. Cool beans. So that's how you end up getting in this position. Right. Um. Do you have any kids? I do not. No. And so, have you ever been married? I haven't. No. I. I I'm going to go ahead and disclose it. I'm HIV positive, and so when I get into relationships, um, it is my duty to tell my partner, you know, that I have, you know, HIV or whatever. Um, so I haven't been into too many partnerships or relationships due to that fact, because some people are not yeah. um, schooled on that type of. I get it. You know. Are you on like prep and stuff like that? No, I take HIV meds. HIV um, meds. Okay. Yeah. 
and um, take them daily. But I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm healthy. Yeah, yeah, you look healthy for yeah, sure. I'm, I'm just down right now, you know. <laughs> hey, man, listen, life is is ups and downs. You know, yeah. life is ups and downs. So let's talk about it. So, okay, so um, what age did you learn about your diagnosis? I was born with it, actually. Um, I was born into the foster care system. I don't know my mother or my dad. Um, I just know that she wasn't able to take care of herself from what my adopted mom told me. I got adopted at the age of eight, I believe. Um, and so my adopted mom told me that my biological mother was like paranoid, schizophrenic, and like she was like on a lot of drugs. I don't know how she got HIV positive. I just know that I ended up getting it um, when I was born. And I was born in Miami, Florida. Um, so I'm from Miami originally, but um, upon being in foster care system, I did move around a lot. So like I said in the beginning, I actually never had a place to go. I just was able to make friends and, you know, sleep on their couch and things of that nature. Um, and yeah, so at, um, at 16, no, at 12, 12 or 13 is when I moved to Georgia with my adopted sister. Mm -hmm. And um, cause she was out here working in Gwinnett County, but me and her didn't never got along either. I was abused. I was sexually abused as well. Sexually abused by who? By my adopted brother. It's 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 a crazy story, but. Um, and so I, wait, so you you came here to live with your adopted sister? No, we was already living together in Florida, but then she ended up getting a job with her boyfriend in Gwinnett County. So we ended up moving from Miami to Georgia. So she was your adopted sister, not your adopted mom? Right, she was my adopted sister. My adopted mom ended up passing away, I'm sorry. My okay. My adopted mom passed away in 2008. But before she passed away, she was telling me a little bit about my biological mom and you know how she was on drugs and things of that nature. Um, but, I, but after my adopted mom passed away, um, I ended up having to you know, stay with my adopted sister. Okay, and, and she, that was her daughter? Yeah, that was her daughter. Okay. And she also had a son which whom was sexually assaulted me and my other three sisters as well. Adopted sisters. What age did that start? That started at age twelve. Twelve? Yeah. What age did it go to? To like thirteen. That's like almost a year. And I told my adopted mom this was before she passed, I told her the situation. She didn't believe me of course because that's her son or whatever. But to this day like I still have resentment towards the situation. I'm not trying to cry, but... Let it out. I still have... I, I do hold resentment towards the situation, but my adoption will pass now, so I can't really... You know, I'm older now, so I, I get a lot of things, and, you know, I understand a little bit, you know, but it's, it was still wrong. You know what I'm saying? I still never got an apology for the situation. Um, at 16 years old, I ended up getting into it with my adopted sister. Therefore, it ended up um, um, leading me to juvenile detention. So I got locked up at 16. Um, and then from 16, my, my re report just kept adding up. I got locked up again at 17. What was and the type then, of stuff he was getting locked up for? Uh, basically just being violent. Assault, basically yeah. fighting. Bat battery, I got battery and criminal trespass at um, 16, but they don't show that on your record because you're a minor. And then at 17, I got into it with one of my um, foster parents. And But she, that story, she ended up lying on me saying that I, I hit her or whatever and the cops was, at, was already at the house. So she was telling them that I hit her and I didn't, but I went ahead and took the charge and they charged me as an adult at 17. And this was here in Georgia, actually. Um, so I got charged again with simple battery and criminal trespass. And then at 19 years old, I was in a group home, um, Elks Aidmore in Conyers, Georgia. And um, that I actually take a responsibility for because I got into it with one of my um, roommates over a phone, it was stupid. But I got locked up for that, and that charge was battery and criminal trespass. Um, and after 19, I told myself that I wasn't going to keep, you know, building that, building that um, rapport against me. So I haven't been in jail since then. Um, at 20, I did graduate high school. I know y'all be like, "Dang, you graduated?" Yes, I graduated. Well, high no, school at people are gonna be like, "Congratulations." <laughs> well, many people on this channel never graduated. Yeah, so I, I ended up there getting my diploma. I went to Heritage High School in, in Conyers. Conyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, 
So I did end up graduating high school, and then after that, Let I me... did go to college. Okay. But then I let the college life get to me. I ended up flunking out. What um, college? I went to the Georgia Burnett. Okay. College. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. The crazy thing is the state, because I was still part of the state, um, they was paying for it and everything, and I, I, I just ruined that situation completely. What type of stuff um, was you doing parties? <laughs> Going to dorm parties, just hanging out with friends, not um, going to class because I was too, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, we get it, we get it. Hangover. Little, little, little party lifestyle. Yeah. Hey, man, it happens to the best <laughs> of us, all right? You know. All right, so I want to pause you right there, though, because. So, do you think that a lot of those charges and the behavior issues that caused them stem from. Childhood wounds. It absolutely do. And that's why it's important to heal before you get into partnerships with people. It's important to heal before you get into relationships with people. Because when you do have good people on your side, you push them away because you're not sure how they're going to treat you or how this is going to go. You question everything they do. You end up um, having trust issues about the situation. And then, you know, they're just standing there like, I'm here to love you, but... You, know, you can't you receive your, it because right. you're, you're not healed. You, you don't know. What, um... Did... Did your adopted brother ever admit to doing that? Absolutely not. Like I said, to this day, I don't even know where he's at or where my adopted sister's at, but to this and day, And they were I here in Georgia not, last time you knew? The last time I knew, yeah. That was... So, I mean, you know, if he were to happen to come across this video on YouTube, um, first of all, what do you think his thoughts and his reactions would be? probably upset that I exposed them but I don't care because like some like like I said I told mom if you do come across I told our mom the situation I did tell her whether you know that or not she didn't believe me because again you were her son you know what I'm saying and you know, I get it you know a parent not going to believe somebody they just adopted you know over their own child which I understand but at the end of the day like you you not only did me but you did my disabled sister and my little sister, who was like three or four at the time, that like you would literally come downstairs. We was living in a um, a basement. Mm -hmm. You would literally come downstairs, pretend to wash your clothes, and do weird stuff. And I got the worst of it because I ended up having to. <sighs> yeah, that's. I don't no, know if go ahead and tell it. Allow that, but no, tell <laughs> it, tell it. You end up having to what? I ended up having to, you know, see he would zip down his pants and had to you know suck on his penis and stuff like that and you know all this stuff and he'll finger us and all this stuff and like I said I, I did I told but she didn't believe me about the situation and so to this day it's like I just live with it because I can't do shit about it I can only forgive him which I have but it still hurts to know that your own family which I did uh, um, I, I did consider them family. consider you guys family you know but I guess you didn't consider me as one of yours. And maybe because I was adopted and, you know, I don't know. I don't know the real, I can't speak for them, but I just know from my perspective, I believe that's probably what it was. You guys wanted to be the only child. Your mom had a heart, so she adopted other kids into the family. And I guess you guys had how, a how, What's that. the age difference between you guys, between you and him? He's probably in his 30s or 40s right now. Right now, currently. So, I mean, when you was 12, he was how old? He was probably like 28, 29, like my age right now. He was a grown man? Grown man, yes, sir. And I was 12, 13 years old. Huh. A grown, can I curse? A yeah, yeah, yeah. A grown ass man, yes. Doing all that. <sighs> okay, it's, okay. It's beyond me, but, you know... As, as the days, you know, as you get older, like, you realize, you know, you can't do nothing but heal. You know what I'm saying? What's it his name? Me, his, <laughs> his name is Mark. Mark what? Mark Melton. Mark Milton? Melton. M -L -T -O -N. Melton? M-E-L-T-O-N. Yes. Huh. And I'm a Kennebrew. I got adopted into the Kennebrew family. My adopted mom name is Dorothy Kennebrew. And my sister, who I was living with, her name is Lisa Melton. So they all got the same name for their mom. But I don't know if my adopted mom got married and got Kennebrew and she didn't give her kids. Her, I don't know. Right, why right, right, know. right. But I know I'm a Kennebrew. So. I get it. Okay. Yeah. 
but my original last name is Newsom before I got adopted. Newsom? Newsom. N E W S O M E. Yeah, because you know, you never know the reach that these videos have. You know, I'm always shocked by it myself. Right. Um, so you never know. Somebody might watch this and say, Man, I think I might be related to her. Yeah, so if you guys looking for your long lost child, um, my, my original or cousin name, or sister whoever, or brother or anything original name is mcdalia newsom but i am a kinnebrew right now because i got adopted so it's wow. k-i-n-n-i b as in boy r-e-w mm. but mcdalia is my first name okay so what are we doing at this point to try to get ourselves out of this position of homelessness? Right now we're at uh, Gateway Center. I am currently washing my clothes, but I just got out of a shelter called Calvary. Mm -hmm. um, it only lasts 21 days. Okay. And so yesterday was my last night. So okay. I just got back that outside. Street, mm -hmm. Right. And the things about those programs is like I feel like they should extend it. I feel like there should be other, you know, opportunities for people that don't have a solid place. Like, cause it seems like they always trying to help. No offense, they always trying to help women with kids mm -hmm. or elderly people. Mm. It, but it's like people like me, that like single that don't have kids. It's like, well, you got to figure it out, you know. And it's like, <laughs> it, it don't hurt to help, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it don't I mean, hurt how do you, to, how do you, uh, how do you get up off, you know, get, how do you get on your feet in 21 days? You know what I'm saying? Like that's that, exactly that's that's, my that's point. that sounds almost almost impossible. So like. Yeah, yeah. These some of these programs like, definitely need to be tweaked. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you 100 percent on that. So, right. All right. Well, listen, Miss. Um, we really appreciate you taking right. the time answering all of our questions. Um, if anybody out there wanted to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? Yeah, my uh, Facebook is Mimi Kennebrew, K I N N I B S and Boy R E W. I have a cash app if you want to donate. It's Mimi93 underscore cash. Um, and my Instagram, I don't really use that much. Um, but it's Unchained underscore MSK. And, uh, yeah. That's, uh, well, listen, that's like I say, we really appreciate you. Of course. And we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, okay? Of course. Thank you, guys. You make sure you have a good one, sweetie. You too. All right.